Good morning, or good afternoon, whatever time you guys are watching this video. So we're doing the 3.2 notes today, translations for geometry. So take a second, take a look at the exploration, um, go to that website. You want to move the arrow around and also move around the points, A, B, C. Move the points in the mirror line around. So what do you notice? And then compare and contrast the original shape and its image. What's the same? What is different? All right, hopefully you had a chance to take a look at the um, link and the exploration. So let's get into some vocabulary. So a translation is a transformation motion where the coordinates are moved according to a set pattern called a vector. So we can see if I take a look at this orange line, we move to the right and go up, or if I was going to from the orange to the blue, I was going down and then to the left. So a vector is a method of communicating how x and y coordinates change for a translation. So if I have 3, negative 2, that means right 3 and down 2. So if we think about these as x and y, my exit, my x-axis is left and right, so that means if I have a positive, I'm going to go to the right, and negative, go to the left, and then y is my up and down axis, so negative goes down, which means positive goes up. So taking a look at the negative 4, 6, that means I'm going to go to the left, 4, and up, 6. All right, so take a look at example one and see if you guys, I'll give you guys a couple seconds to figure out which ones are the translations. All right, so I got B, C, and F. So if I take a look at A, it definitely goes up a little bit, and then off to the right if I just take a look at that top point, and all those points do the same thing. It goes up and to the right. C, it shows you where it's moving. We have the lines going down for each of them um, where the shape is moving. And then F, it's just moving. If I take a look at my C value here, it's translating one direction. Even though it's not going um, an up or down at all, it's still, um, it still has that vector going one direction. Um, a and E, we talked about that in 3.1, where those are reflections, and it's going over one of the axes. And then D is neither one of those um, actions. We haven't gone over those yet, so D doesn't work either. Okay, let's take a look at example two. So translate the given figure along 3, negative 4. So 3, that means I'm going to go up 3, and then negative 4, or sorry, not up 3, right 3 right 3, because it's my x, and x goes left and right, and then my negative 4, which means I go down 4. So I'm going to go from each point and do these um, use this vector. So I'm going to go right 3 and down 4. So here's my new a value. Remember, we do a prime. All right, b goes right 3 and down 4. So there's my new B prime. And then C, same thing, right 3, down 4. So there's C prime. So now I can connect the dots between all three points that I just made. And I have now um, translated my graph. So we want to state the coordinates for the image. So A prime, we're at negative 2, negative 2. So we went left 2 and down 2. B is positive 1 and then positive 2. And C is 6, negative 2. All right, let's go ahead and try this with example 3. So translate the given figure along negative 2, 1. So that means left 1 and up 1. Or left 2, sorry, and up 1. All right, so we'll start with A, left 2, up 1, so A prime. B, left 2, up 1, there's my B prime. C, left 2, up 1, C prime. So then I can go ahead and connect the dots. So 
So there's my new triangle. So we'll go ahead and put the coordinates. So A prime, we're all the way at negative seven for our X and positive three for Y. B, we're at negative four and positive seven. And then C, we are at one, three. All right, so now for example, four and five, we wanna write the translation vector that happens. So remember the, the vector will be with like two little arrows on both sides instead of the parentheses. So what you're going to do is pick one point. Does not matter which one, just pick one. So we'll do A. And so I wanna count how much it goes down and over, or in some cases it might go up and over. So we're gonna one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I went down eight. So down eight, and then one, two, three, four. So then I went right four. So down, um, we always start with our x, so x comma y. So x is left and right. So if I went right four, that's a positive four. Then I went down eight, so that's negative eight. So that is the vector from our image to our pre-image. All right, example five, we wanna write the translation vector for a, B, C, two, A prime, B prime, C prime. So once again, we pick any point. Let's go ahead and do C this time. Um, so I go up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep, so I went up nine. And then I wanna go all the way over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I went right eight. So remember we do X and then Y, so left, right and then our up down, so we went right eight, so that's positive eight, and then we went up nine, so that's a positive nine. So our vector from our image, our pre-image to our image is eight, nine. All right, let's take a look at coordinate notation. So coordinate notation is a method of communicating how X and Y coordinates change for a translation. So x, y, 2, x plus 3, y minus 5 means that we move right 3 and down 5. So very similar with our vectors. It's just written a different way. So these are two different ways to show um, a translation, either with the coordinate notation or with a vector. All right, so our second example, if we have x minus 4, that means left four and y plus one equals means up one. So go ahead and take a look at example six and go ahead and see if you can describe the movements with um, x, y to x minus 10, y plus four. All right, so hopefully you got left three and then up four. So x is our up or x is right left and y is up, down. So as long as you remember that, and then positive is right or up, negative is left or down. Okay, so let's go ahead and try a couple graphing examples. So example seven, we wanna translate the figure from x, y to x plus two, y minus three. So that means we're gonna go right, two, and down, three. So from I'm gonna do this with every single point. So right, two, and down, three. So there's my new A, right two, down three. All right, there's my new B prime. And then same thing with C, right two, down three. And there is C prime. I go ahead and connect the dots. And now I have my uh, translated triangle. So let's go ahead and find the coordinates of each of these. So my A prime is at negative three, comma negative one. B prime is, it doesn't go left or right at all, so zero, and then up two, so two for my Y. And then C, I have five comma negative one. All right, I want you guys to go ahead and try example eight. So I'll give you a second to try it, and then when you, oh, this one is different. I thought it was the same. So I'll go ahead and we'll do example eight together. So write the trans, in coordinate form 
from the movement shown. So this time we're writing it in coordinate form instead of vector form. Once again, we can choose any point. Um, let's go ahead and do B. I don't think I've done B yet, but once again, it doesn't matter. And let's make sure to start with our pre-image and not our image. Um, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I went up nine. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then I went left nine. So we always want to start with x comma y goes to x, and then we have to decide if it's addition or subtraction. So if we went left, it's subtraction, right, it's positive. So we went left nine, so minus nine for my x. And then y, I have to decide if it goes up, it's positive, down, it's negative. So positive nine. So I went left nine and up nine. And so this would be my translation. Alrighty, go ahead and try example nine. So multiple choice, why is a translation a rigid transformation? So go ahead and take a second to think about why is it a rigid transformation? We talked about this in 3.1, so if you need to go back and check that, go for it. I'll give you a second. All right, it is B, because the image and pre-image are the same size and shape. So it makes a rigid transformation if we still have the same size and the same shape. All right, and challenge problem. So for those of you who want to try this challenge problem without me seeing, without you seeing it, I'm gonna give it a couple seconds. You can pause the video before you see it, and then I'll go through it. All right, so, um, the note, if more than one transformation is performed on point A, then the image after the first transformation is A prime, the image after the second transformation is A double prime, and so forth. So if there was three transformation, it'd be A triple prime with three apostrophes up top. All right, so point A is three negative two is reflected on the x-axis and then translated along the vector negative five, negative four, negative five. What are the coordinates for A double prime after both transformations? So I'm gonna go ahead and write this off to the side for us just so we have it to see. So our first point is three, negative two. So let's go ahead and plot that. All right, so there's A. Now I wanna find A prime. So that is reflected along the x-axis. So I'm gonna draw my line so I know where I'm reflecting it. And I know I want to go up to, to the line, which means I have to go up to the other direction. So that means my new A prime is there. So let's go ahead and write the coordinates for that. So we're at three and positive two. All right, and then we wanna translate this point along the vector negative four, negative five. So that means I'm gonna go left four, one, two, three, four, and down five. One, two, three, four, five. So my new A point, my A double prime is down here. So let's go ahead and write that coordinate point. So negative one, comma, one, two, three, negative three. So here are the coordinate points after all those transformations. So something to remind yourself, even though I still have that blue line drawn, when I did my second translation, or transformation, um, I kind of just ignored that blue line because I already did what I needed to with it with my first uh, transformation. So I didn't, I could have ignored it at that point. All right, and that's the end of 3.2. If you have any further questions, please make sure you ask your teacher um, for any extra help. Have a great day.